Hi, I'm John Ballion. Although I study to be a photographer, I've spent most of my life licensing other photographers' images at Top Photo, one of the world's largest press photo archives. In this online course for EU Kaleidoscope, I'm going to show you some of the processes that went into build a 1950s photo feature and challenge you to create your own replicating the 1950s techniques in a 21st century setting. So the 1950s was the end of the golden age of photojournalism. And it's not just because of the famous photographers that were active in the decade, but also because of the magazines that offered space to the photo feature, allowing these great photographers a platform to exhibit their work. Most of you will be familiar with Life, but Europe was the birthplace of the photo-led magazines with Stefan Laurent. Stefan Laurent brought his ideas from Europe and took it to Life magazine and made it a success that it was. Europe hosted magazines like Picture Post, Illustrated, Paris Match, Quick, Epoca, Tempo. The red masthead with white lettering was a common global thread which was taken up as far as Africa in drum and Australia pics. So I have two magazines here and firstly I'm going to look at Illustrated for week ending 25th of August 1951. It is an excellent example of the contents one might see in a feature magazine from the 1950s. The covers by the 1950s were typically colour or colourised and favoured famous film actresses or British magazines included royalty and Princess Margaret as shown here was always prominent. In this piece, it was to celebrate her 21st birthday. The price is three pence, which is very affordable, and around 50 euro cents in today's currency. It's just spare change. You will also notice that it came out every Wednesday, so it's a weekly, constant reminder. After a few pages of introductory and advertising, the first feature that we come to is entitled Polio Hotel. It's a typical feature in that it has a very social context, a day-to-day the way we live, but more likely the way someone else is living from a part of society the reader is probably unaware of but will be interested in. Star photographers usually paired up with journalists on assignment. The pictures would take up the lion's share of the page space and the text would give it good context, bring the reader into the lives of people like Sheila, the woman with polio in this feature. Next we have some coverage of the British Prime Minister on holiday then a light taste of the Korean War, and then we come to the main event, which is Princess Margaret, a very heavily picture-led feature. It goes through a timeline up to the beautiful centre page spread by Cecil Beaton. Following this is a great fill-in feature, and it's easily replicated today. It's called Backdrop to a City by Van der Elsken. The meagre text is an indication that a journalist wasn't present, and the photographer chanced his luck with passers-by on the common street poster theme that ties it all together. Following that is the girl who hopes to be famous piece. Most, of course, never did, but it is a dream that continues in the men of women's day, accentuated by reality TV shows of the 21st century. Edinburgh's Princess Street is the focus of the next feature, which is an easy enough theme to follow. Much like the backdrop to a city piece, a photographer can catch anything by chance that happens in the street, but with a bit of planning, they will know some of the main events. This piece has well-supported text, and it is a part one, because at the end of the piece you'll see there's part two, the main street of Glasgow. I'm sure the editors were hoping they might be able to sustain the day in the life of a city street for many issues to come. We have a photo picture quiz. What else would you find in a pictorial magazine? And finally, A Touch of Fashion Photography by Norbert Leonard, using the bomb craters of Berlin as the setting for Mars. Reading the article, the German dress designer who created these evening gowns so advanced in fashion that the most suitable place to wear them would be on Mars, was unable to take his collection of models and gowns to that lurid planet. He showed off his collection in a planetary landscape on Earth, a bomb crater near Berlin. Eight young men perspiring in padded suits and diving helmets, were Martians for the day. The models posed precariously on slopes of rubble, and both fashion houses and customers were well pleased with the shop window. Finally, we have a follow-on from the Prime Minister's holiday, and then letters to the editor, and the answer to the quiz. First, banana, if you were wondering. 
And that's a wrap for a very typical 1950s picture-led magazine. Now the reason I have picture post here is not because of the fantastic Birdman cover, which I find to be quite a letdown inside, but instead because of the feature from page 37 entitled, What's Wrong with the Teddy Girls? The text is written in a prominent credit by David Mitchell, and it starts, We were standing in the hall of a youth club talking to two teddy girls. It's suggesting that it was him and the photographer. But if you look at the images used, you will notice that none of these images are taken inside a hall. Now the reason behind this is because the photographer was working for an agency and shot this on his own without a journalist present. And the reason I know this is because the photographer was none other than future film director Ken Russell. And we discovered the original negatives in our archive here at Top Photo shortly before Ken Russell's 80th birthday. The piece is four pages long and Ken does not get a photographer credit until the third page. And it's these amazing pictures I want to explore further. So this is roughly how we found them more than 50 years after they were taken. Packaged up in a brown envelope are a big bunch of negatives. Some of them are contact prints and caption sheets. First you will notice the images are all square. This is because Ken was shooting on a rolly cord which shot 6 centimeter square negatives, typically producing 12 exposures on a roll of film. Ken has shot around 5 or 6 rolls of film here and ended up with 8 published images in picture post. Now what I love about this set is that it shows where Ken was headed as a film director. The Teddy Girls were a very chic counterculture group revolving around fashion and very much the actors in this shoot. The backdrop of post-war London was the perfect rough underbelly to germinate these fresh young people into a new generation. Now you see props, we have guns, we have umbrellas, bags, hats, flowers, framing. We have windows in windows and the centre of attention with carefully constructed scenes built on poses, poses, poses and poses all with attitude. And this last image here, In Your Dreams, which was cropped in the original article, is the image that was created by Christopher Bailey as the lead image for the Burberry Here We Are exhibition in London, Hong Kong and Paris. It is hard to believe that this confident young woman called Jean Rayner was just 14 years old when she posed in front of all the bomb damage and the boys to take centre stage for Ken Russell, who would later go on to direct Glenda Jackson in her Oscar-winning role, Women in Love. It is truly a winning set, and I'm sure the Picture Post editors would have loved to run more, but for the 50s photo feature, everything was limited, focused, edited. A quick taste of life for the reader, just like the shadow of photography itself. And can this be replicated today? I don't see why not. Pockets of counterculture groups with homemade fashion in the face of globalization are still out there to be captured. The challenge is not to find them, but to get inside, gain a degree of trust where they will look you in the eye and allow you to photograph. And to be truly brilliant, you need the creative skill to direct, frame, know your camera, and capture the energy as it is in the life to reflect on a page or screen.